Welcome. In this video, we are going to embed a login form in a Wagtail page. Uh, in the previous tutorial, we have implemented a comment functionality on a page. And if the user, if a registered user wanted to comment, then he would have to go back to the login page in order to log in and then come back to the article page. Now, we want to prevent that by allowing the user to log in on the article page itself. The way we're going to do that is we are going to override the serve method of that page to add a login form to it and we are going to adapt the template to make that possible. Uh, first the uh, form is going to be hidden but we will include a link to unhide that form and submit the filled in form via jQuery. And then we just return to the page and um, comment. To override this surf method, this is described in the Wagtail documentation. Let's look that up. Here it is. Basically, you define your own, <coughs> your own surf method and you can include anything you want. What we will do is uh, add a login form to that. So let's head over to our models.py. And have a look at our article page model. Here we are going to add the surf method. And first thing is that we are going to create a response, which would be the normal surf, uh, the result of the normal surf method, by just calling the request and the template that we are going to use. And then we're going to add a login form. Now, the login form that we're going to use is from all auth. Um, that's the authentication package that we used. Let's look that up. Here it is, uh, all auth documentation, and here is the login form. So we have to import that. That's what we're going to do in a minute. Um, we use the um, field context data of this respond. Now, response in this case is a template response object. We can look that up in the documentation of Django, template response, and it will have a context data field. If you look at a ancestor of this context response, of this template response object, um, here it is, and it should have a, where are we? Here it is, context data. So that means that we can add anything to this field that we want to pass it on to the template. And in this case, this will be the login form. And then we just respond, return that response, and it's as simple as that. Now we still have to import that login form, so let's do that. And that finishes off our model. Now to the template. Let's look at article page.html. Here it is. Um, here is the comment section of the template, and we're going to add the login form just before that. If the user is not authenticated, then we add a div with a form in it, and the form is going to be a post method, going to use a post method. It will have an ID, and then the action is going to to go to the URL account login, which is a named URL of the package all auth, but you can use your own named URL if you want. And then this is important here because the style display is none, means that the initially this form is going to be hidden. We are going to add a CSRF token to the form and a div, which is just one line with a couple of elements in there. First of all, a username or email field. All auth provides a field which is called login, which is email or username, depending on the way you specified your authentication. And it includes um, a line account, a template account form field.html. And this is the exact template that we also used for our login page. So we're just going to reuse that. Same thing for the password, exactly the same code, except that we use the password here. And then finally a button which has the text sign in so that the user can click on it and submit this form. Now we still need a link to display this form. So let's add that as well. If the user is not authenticated, then he will see um, a div with a link in it, which says that if you want to comment on this article, please click this link, sign in first. Um, here is the link. Uh, it has a certain ID, and then um, he can also choose to comment on, uh, anonymously, uh, which is the functionality that is provided by the comment 
package that we implemented last time. Um, okay, this finalizes the code here, so we still have to add the jQuery um, code. And for that, if we look at our base template, there is already a block reserved for that, which is called extra JavaScript. Let's have a look at our base template. Um, this is done automatically by Wagtail, if you use that. Template base.html. Uh, yes, here it is at the end of the template. And here is the block extra JavaScript, which we can override in a page if we want to. That's what we're going to do. Now there's one extra thing we need to do because um, we've uh, inserted here the jQuery uh, CDN already, but that is a slim version because that's that was all what that we needed for Bootstrap. But the slim version will not um, handle AJAX calls, and we need to have an AJAX call, so we need to have the non-slim version. I show you that on the AJAX on the jQuery side. If you go there, then it says here you can use the slim build, but it will exclude AJAX, and we do want to have AJAX, so let's have a different CDN. Here is the page for that, jQuery um, minified is okay, but not the slim version minified. Let's copy this over and put it here. Um, Indentis. And then we can get rid of this one. Yeah. And then go back to the article page to insert the JavaScript. Uh, let's do that here. Um, the script with um, if the document is ready, if the document is fully loaded, then we will add a function which says that if we would click on this id login first link, the link that we need to display the form, then first we're going to prevent that the page is scrolling to that link, so we just uh, prevent the default action of the clicking on the link, and then we're going to show the login form. That's all for this. And now the user can fill in the form, and if he clicks the submit button of the form, then we're going to have the AJAX call, which is going to handle the login. First of all, we prevent the default action of the submission of the form, which would bring us to another page, and this is not what we want, so we put in the statement prevent default, and then we insert the AJAX call, and that will have a couple of arguments. First of all, it will be a post method. It will go to the same URL again, account login, and then um, the data is going to be the data that has been in the login form. We're going to use the serialize function to serialize that. Then if it is successful, so if the post is successful, then what we'll do is hide the login form, also hide the link to that, to unhide the login form because we don't need either of them. And then last thing is that we're going to reload the page. Now this is a trade-off. Um, it would be maybe a bit nicer not to reload this page, but then in that case, we would need to do a couple of things. First of all, we would have to refresh our CSRF token because we've used that already for the login form. And if the user now submits a comment, then we would reuse that CSRF token and then we would get an error if it would not have been refreshed. Uh, also, we would have to hide a couple of fields of the comment form because one of the fields is a name form. We don't need that anymore. We, because we've got the name of the user now because he's registered. And also, if the user wants to reply on, on one of the comments, then um, we would make that have to make that possible because currently the comment part of the page still assumes that the user is not registered. So there's a couple of things to change there. It's doable, but uh, for now we just make it ourselves easy and just reload the page. Um, if the form is not successful, then what we're going to do is to submit the login form. Um, so that will bring us to the default login process for the user. This is also a trade-off because um, there is a number of possibilities. The user could have filled in a wrong password. The user might not be registered so that he has to register first, or there could be a couple of other things going on. And we don't want to repeat the full functionality of the login procedure here on this article page. So in that case, we just bring the user to the login page and he 
picks it up from there. Now this is all of the code. Uh, we should be able to try this out now. So let's go to our directory and log in to the virtual activate the virtual environment. We don't need to migrate because we haven't touched the database in our code, so we should just be able to run the server. Okay, go to our page, reload it. This is our home page, go to the article section, let's pick an article, go down, and here we have the comment form, and here is this link that we need to sign in first, so let's click that, and that will display the login form, just a very simple one, uh, let's log in here. with a password and sign in and the page is refreshed and then you see that all of the fields that we don't need anymore are gone and we just have a common field so that we can post our comment. That's all for this video, thank you very much and see you next time.